Hello, my name's uh, Stephen Lamb and I'd like to talk to you today about the treatment of plaque psoriasis. This talk will uh, encompass a number of topics and I want to start with talking about the importance of the assessment of the patient and selecting the appropriate treatment. I'll briefly cover the topical treatments and some of the other second line treatments including phototherapy, the systemic oral treatments, biologic treatments and then briefly the, the importance of monitoring treatment. The management of psoriasis really begins with good education of the patient. It's really important to discuss about the disease. It's a chronic disease and it's probably lifelong. It's also important to discuss and educate patients about the possible comorbidities, particularly psoriatic arthritis and the metabolic syndrome. With any patient with a chronic disease, it's important to have good collaboration uh, between the patient and the doctor. And important to have regular review and assessment and making sure that the treatment is responding well. With psoriasis it's important to have important, uh, with good general health advice including weight reduction, exercise and good dietary advice. Choosing the right treatment for a patient really should be based on a number of factors. It's important to assess the disease correctly. What's the extent of the disease? What's the surface area of of psoriasis that's involved. Where is the psoriasis involved? Is it in the scalp, in the flexures, in the nails, or is it on most of the rest of the skin? It's very important to have um, a, a good idea on the psychological aspects of the disease and the potential impact on quality of life to the patient. Ask about comorbidities and other medical risk factors such as hypertension. Discuss also the potential adverse effects of all the treatments and the the right treatment might depend on what the patients had previously and the patient's current preferences. The traditional ladder approach to psoriasis is to start with topical treatment and if that's not responding move to second line agents such as phototherapy and then systemic therapy and biologics. But this will depend on how the patient presents. If the patient has um, severe flexural disease and topical treatment and may not work, systemic treatment would be the next line patient has severe psoriatic arthritis with their psoriasis, then systemic treat, uh, therapy might be the, the best first option. Topical treatment is mainly used to treat limited plaque disease. This is around 10 to 20 percent of body surface area. It's important to prescribe the correct concentration and give the patient the correct amount of cream to prescribe. The sequence of topical treatment will depend on the extent and the patient preference. But in most situations, the first line of treatment for plaque psoriasis is topical corticosteroids, with or without a topical vitamin D analogue. Most topical corticosteroids are applied once or twice daily, and the vitamin D analogue is applied alternating with that. Short intermittent courses for three to four weeks, with reduction in frequency and tailoring, is probably the best approach. It's important to use the, uh, the, uh, current, uh, the proper strength of topical corticosteroids depending on what a site of skin that's being, um, uh, for where it's being applied. So moderate uh, potency for face and flexures, more very potent for the thicker areas of the skin such as the soles and the palms. Vitamin D analogues can be very useful in treating psoriasis. The only uh, available one in New Zealand is calcipatrol. It's usually applied once or twice daily. It's not, it can cause local irritation, so it's not usually tolerated very well on the face. There is a maximum of um, vitamin D analogue that you can prescribe because of the possible risk of uh, side effects. And this is around 100 grams per week. Patients who, are, who use more than 100 grams a week are at risk of hypercalcemia and, in, and decreased parathyroid hormone. Also, vitamin D analogues are inactivated by certain topical, uh, certain topical preparations, such as salicylic acid. Other topical treatments uh, include uh, emollients. While the skin is not dry, they reduce scale and itching, and can reduce irritation. Coal tar solution, or LPC, has been used for many years to treat psoriasis for its anti-inflammatory properties can be made up in an emollient base of a concentration usually between 1 or 5%, although sometimes stronger concentrations can be used. It's limited because it's smelly and messy. Salicylic acid can also be made up in emollient bases, again a concentration of uh, 1 to 5%, and it's very useful as a keratolytic, 
particularly for the scalp um, or thicker plaques of psoriasis. But higher concentrations can cause irritation. Certain situations you might uh, decide on a particular type of topical treatment. For the scalp, uh, coconut oil and salicylic acid combinations are very useful in removing scale. For the face, uh, mainly moderate potent topical corticosteroids are used, but immunomodulating agents such as permecrolemus may also be useful. Flexural psoriasis responds well to moderate potency topical corticosteroids in, in short uh, bursts and can also be used with uh, topical antifungal treatments. It's important to remember that in widespread plaque disease, avoid long-term monotherapy of topical corticosteroids because there is a significant increase of side effects. Patients are not responding to topical corticosteroids or have widespread disease, then uh, second-line uh, management is often warranted. Phototherapy is a very useful uh, treatment for chronic plaque psoriasis. Narrowband UVB given three times a week for around six to eight weeks has around a 75% efficacy in treating plaque psoriasis. More traditional methods of giving phototherapy include PUVA, where an oral uh, photosensitizing agent is given two hours before the UVA exposure. This is given two times a week, but it can be associated with more, more side effects. Target phototherapy may be useful for more limited disease or areas of psoriasis that are hard to reach for traditional phototherapy, such as flexural areas or scalp psoriasis. There are a number of oral agents that are used in the treatment of a moderate to severe chronic plaque psoriasis. Methotrexate is probably the first choice. It is a slow onset of action and can take up to six to eight weeks but it's very effective in, in plaque psoriasis and also effective in psoriatic arthritis. So it's often the first choice if there are both diseases present. Cyclosporin has a much more rapid response. It's taken twice daily and is more useful for shorter disease control. It can be useful in young patients, particularly those that are considering uh, conception. Acetretin is a synthetic retinoid and it's usually used in combination with other treatments as it's not that particularly effective as monotherapy. It can be useful to reduce scale and is useful in combination with topical treatments and phototherapy. Other systemic agents such as fumaric acid esters are unfortunately not available in New Zealand. Biologic treatments have probably revolutionised the management of severe psoriasis. Adalumab, etanercept and infliximab are the current funded biologic treatments available in New Zealand. Pharmax special authority criteria restricts their use to patients with more severe disease, that is a PASI of greater than 15, which is fairly extensive psoriasis, but can be given to patients who have some more severe limited disease, particularly if it affects their hands, palms or face. Patients must have tried previous systemic therapies or UVB or they may have not been tolerated or contraindicated. It's important uh, with any treatment that you prescribe for psoriasis that the patient is reviewed re regularly, preferably every two to three months. Are they using the correct amount and, uh, uh, of topical uh, treatment and are, are they developing any side effects? Is the psoriasis responding? Uh, is the surf uh, surface, body, surface area of psoriasis reducing? And is their quality of life or psychological effects improving? And certainly if there's no improvement, then you should consider switching to an alternative treatment or referring to a dermatologist. Once adequate disease control is established, it's also important to continue to ask about associated co comorbidities that may occur later on, such as psoriatic arthritis and other uh, metabolic syndrome. So in summary, there are multiple treatment options for psoriasis and treatment should be directed towards the extent of the skin disease and the other comorbidities. It's important to tailor the treatment to the specific patient. If treatment is not working, then consider referral or introducing a second line treatment early on in the disease. Phototherapy and systemic agents are the usual second line or, uh, agents and biologics are usually reserved for more severe disease or that or patients who have not responded to the usual uh, other standard treatment.